Welcome back. Today we're going to cover the all-important smoothing plane. Uh, it's probably one of the most important planes on your bench, uh, that next to a jack plane. We're going to go over what the function of it is, what a smoothing plane is, and why it's important. Why it's important for it to be the most tuned plane on your bench, and um, all the extra little details there. We'll also cover some of the types of smoothing planes, different configurations of frogs, and, and other details along those lines. To start off with, uh, what is a smoothing plane, right? So a smoothing plane is a plane that creates a very smooth surface that's ready for finish, or in some cases you would want to rough it up with a card scraper so you can apply a stain or a dye or a toner of some sort, give it something where it can actually go in. You can actually get a board so smooth with a smoothing plane that's set up that it doesn't allow dye penetration or stain penetration. Um, that would be for direct finish. Like if you're going to spray lacquer over top of it or put some, some poly over it or you're going to put some shellac or a clear of some sort, you would use a smoothing plane. That would be the last operation if it's set up properly for you to move on to the finished stages of your project. Now, a smoothing plane is, as I just said, something that smooths the surface. So technically, all planes, if set up properly, are smoothing planes. Now, there's a traditional definition of a smoothing plane, which would be what you see in front of me here. It's typically a number three, a number two, a number one, a number four, four and a half smoothers. That's what they're referred to as a smoother or smoothing plane, uh, or a smooth plane, if you read the side of a box of an old plane. So, but then you also have little guys like this. This is technically a smoothing plane. It's small, it's wood, but it's a smoothing plane. You've got the number one size planes, like this little X0 is also a smoothing plane. You've got the number one size Lee Nielsen, same thing, smoothing plane. A number two is a smoothing plane. A number three is a smoothing plane. Um, the fours, or four size planes, typically nine inches in length, are a smoothing plane. So nine by two, right? So nine inches long, two inch wide iron. So that's technically a smoothing plane. So that's what its job is. Now, a lot of people don't realize there's a thing that I'll refer to commonly as a super smoother. A super smoother is a four and a half size smoothing plane. A four and a half is just a much wider and a little bit longer version of a number four. And it's for smoothing large panels. I love them. They're wonderful. My favorite plane in my shop, and this is my plane, is my Miller's Falls number 10. Anybody who knows me knows I talk about this plane. It's not pretty. It's not a collector's edition. It's a type 3. It's very comfortable in my hands. And it is a wonderful smoothing plane. It, reduce, it gives me very little to no tear out. Um, it's just, it's my workhorse. But I use this, I'll go to this a lot faster than I'll go to a number four. It's wider, better registration. They're just wonderful. Wonderful all together. They're four and a half size. Um, I know guys that have five and a halves set up as super smoothers. Again, if you're doing a really long tabletop, you don't, you want the longer reference area, right? If you have a four size plane, that's nine inches. So if you're doing a 60, 70 inch top, and you don't pay attention to what you're doing, you can actually create a surface that's not flat anymore. You spent hours and hours and hours and hours using a jointer, using a four plane, and using like a number eight to smooth this gigantic tabletop out, and then you're going to go back and chase it with a plane that's this big. It's, honestly, it could introduce out of flat. So, in that specific case, I actually have a number seven. It's a record 07 that I've set up as a smoothing plane. So there, there are applications where a larger plane can be set up as a smoother, even though it's a larger plane. It's typically considered a four plane or a jointer plane or a triplane, those type of things. They're just as capable of being set up as a smoother. So now, what do I define as a smoother? Any plane, like for example, this number two, this Lee Nielsen number two, any plane that is set up with a really tight mouth that's extremely sharp. Smoothing planes, you have to keep them as, as sharp as you possibly can. 
their job is to not tear out. Their job is to make the surface butter smooth. You run your hand across, you should feel nothing other than glass. That's a smoothing plane. So you keep them super sharp all the time. Keep them sharp. Keep the mouth tight. And I'll show you in this series of videos, I'll show you how to set up a smoothing plane properly. Get a nice tight mouth. And any of these planes, for the most part, are capable of making a thousandth shaving. So now, during the course of this series of videos, I'm going to go through each and every one of these planes. Untuned, unmessed with, other than cleaned, the frog moved a little bit to close the mouth, and sharp. And we're going to see, is it capable of doing a thousand shaving, which is typically what guys gauge as being a solid smoothing plane. Get a nice thousandth shaving. So now you'll probably ask, why a thousandth? Why a thousandth shaving? Whereas guys refer to as a one thousand shaving. Why a half a thousandth shaving? Well, the less material you take, the less chance you have for something to tear out. Which is why a smoothing plane is the last plane you use, not the first. There's a lot of guys out there that are brand new to woodworking, they're brand new to hand tool use, and they're told to buy a number four as their first plane. Now, some will disagree with me, but I think that's absolutely completely wrong. The traditional course of plane prop, a proper plane usage is a number five. That's going to, you're going to get things roughly where you need them to be. And then a number six. So if you've got a panel that's 22 inches, 23 inches long by 18 inches wide, I'm going to use a number six for that. It's one of the most underappreciated planes out there. Number sixes are amazing. They don't beat you to death because it's not a heavy plane. But it's bigger than a number five. So for smaller panels, I'm going to go for the six all day long. And I have my six set up as a smoothing plane. I, but I'll back the, uh, the iron up, or back the frog up, to make it to where I can take more material. So it's general purpose for me. Um, a number seven, longer panel. Use a number seven. Get it nice and flat. If it's a tabletop, that's the only time I would tell you to use a number eight. We're talking 80, 90 inches long. Your panel, 80, 90 inches long by 40 inches wide. I would use a number 8 for that. But I could get away with a 7. So, but again, when you're done with the rough work, you're done getting everything nice and flat. It's all true. It, there's no twist in it. You're real good. There, that's when you go to the 4.5 or the number 4 or the number 3, which on a larger panel I wouldn't use a 3. I would use a 4 or 4.5. Four um, that's when you go to smooth that panel out. Because you're only taking such a little amount of material off that it's not really going to introduce a lot of, a lot of cupping or, or twist or anything because you're taking a minute amount of material. Its only job is to make that panel as smooth as possible. That's it. So you're talking maybe four or five passes from side to side to get it nice and smooth. Now, if you don't have the mouth set up right and you've got the iron too deep, you can very well create this in a longer panel. So, but a smoothing plane is your last step. It's not your first. So your first plane you need to buy, a number five. Second plane you need to buy, a number four. You can do just about anything you need to do with a four and a five. It just takes more skill. So you can do an 80 inch long panel with a number five. It just takes more skill. And you have to chase high spots, low spots, that kind of thing a little bit more versus using a seven or an eight or something longer to do that type of thing. So um, we're going to go through every single one of these. I'm going to show you real quick what's a smoother. Different types are basically variations of smoothers um, as the traditional sense, right? So transitional plane. This is a smoothing plane. Small, nice iron. It's a smoothing plane. This would be like a number three size. Of course, your typical number four. That's a smoothing plane. Again, this little guy, smoothing plane. Number one, smoothing plane. Number two size, it's a smoothing plane. Number three size, it's a smoothing plane. A four and a half is also a smoothing plane. But to reiterate what I said earlier, anything can be set up as a smoothing plane. 
So let that, let that soak in a little bit. I know you're probably going, wow, nobody's ever said that you can use any plane as a smoothing plane. It's very true. I do it all the time. I've got, like I said, I've got a, an 07 record. It was passed down to me by my father. It's a later one, and I use it to smooth boards. Its, joint, it's job isn't to joint. I use the Lee Nielsen 7 that I got to joint. Um, you can use it as a smoother. It absolutely is a feasible thing to do. You end up with multiple planes. So a lot of guys ask, why would I have four number fours? Other than the fact that if you're lazy and you don't like to sharpen a lot, which you can do that, sharpen all four at one shot, and then, hey, it's longer between sharpenings, right? But it takes you longer to sharpen the four when you do. Typically, I'll have multiple multiple number fours set up so that I can have them with different mouth openings, different circumstances. I have one that I can only take a thousand shaving. That's it. I can't take any more than that. That's my super smoother, right? And then I've got ones that are set up with a huge factory size mouth opening, and they're just for roughing stuff out on smaller panels. If you've got a panel that's this big by this big, do you really want to use a number seven on that? That's insane. It's, it's too much work. So you use a number four. You can do that with an open mouth. Or you can use a number five. Same thing. So I'll move some of this stuff out of the way and we'll go over these one at a time. See you in just a minute. Okay, so this is your standard run of the mill, you're going to find them most everywhere, type of smoothing plane. It's a number four. This is a Stanley. It's a Leonard Bailey pattern plane. Um, Leonard Bailey was the one that pretty much invented this configuration of frog and iron and uh, the whole the whole mess you have right here. He pretty much invented it. So Stanley acquired the patent, and they've been making them like that ever since. Other companies make them similar to this as well, with some variances, right? So this is a later type. This is a later type Stanley Bailey number four, and it's got. One thing that the next one I show you does not have, it's going to have the frog adjustment screw. So this screw right here allows you to move the frog in and out to adjust to close the mouth. So you have your typical frog configuration. You've got the frog feet, the frog seat top, and they'll, they will sit, the feet right here sit right inside of here, and then the top right here sits right here. So it's got four points of contact in this plane. As you have a you have a gap here where it's not touching. It's just here, 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 and here. So those are the areas you got to be concerned about when you go to tune a plane, which we'll cover a little later on. Uh, but this is your typical Bailey style number four size smoother. This is the one you're, you're going to find on eBay at the markets. We've got a ton of them on the website. Um, this is just your run-of-the-mill number four. It's a good user plane, good to go. So this one does have, like I said, the additional frog adjustment screw, which some planes have, some planes don't. Um, I don't find them terribly important as far as their use goes. Normally, once you set the frog on a plane, you pretty much leave it alone. And I apologize for the phone in the background. It's I normally silence them. Silence. We're good to go now. So, in this case, the plane, the way it's set up and the way you're typically going to get it, like if you buy one off of eBay, the way they're set up and typically you're going to get them is with the frog backed all the way up to what I call the, fr the, the factory frog position. And that's usually where the bottom of the frog feet line up directly with the milling on the sole and they leave. I'm going to put this back together real quick so that I can show you so that there's no additional forward movement. So if you look here, this is lined up inside of here, where the, the bottom of the, the sole of the plane is directly in line with the plane of the face of the frog. So that's a wide open mouth. Now, if the iron goes back in, I'll show you the position of where the iron falls from a factory setting. By the way, don't be afraid of the later Stanleys. They're still just as good as the as the as the earlier ones. And actually, the one, next one I'm going to show you is one of my favorites as far as Stanleys go for use. So now, if you see the opening here between the front of the iron and the front of the mouth, it's a pretty big opening. 
And again, we'll, we'll address that in a bit as to um, how to close that up and how tight you really want it. So, moving on to this guy's counterpart, which is a little bit older than the one I just showed you. It's effectively the same plane, except it doesn't have a frog adjustment screw or yoke catch. There's no frog adjustment screw back here to make adjustments. So there's no screw back there to move the frog back and forth. You, what, you, what you do there, and I'll show you real quick, is you position it manually. It is a little trickier than having than doing it with a frog adjustment screw, but it's completely feasible. And this is actually a nice thick plane. Now the other plane is also nice and thick uh, because they're they're relatively close in in time period of manufacturing. So in this case, you're just going to have to hold the frog in position while you tighten the screws down. So it's not going to be one of those things where you slightly snug the screws and then move the frog back and forth. So again, this is a typical Bailey style plane. Frog configuration, iron configuration, all that. It's your, it's your typical Bailey. What you're going to find as far as Stanley goes. Then you've got something like this. Now, this is a loose term to call it a smoother. It's not adjustable. The mouth is not adjustable. And these planes were pretty much made to plane a door. But technically, by size, it is a smoothing plane. However, I would never use it for that. These are more or less collector's items, although we are going to see what kind of shape we can get out of them at some point. So they're really, really, really simple to put together. There's a little pen right here that holds the iron in place. And that's pretty much about all there is. There is a depth adjustment to it. Uh, these are more or less curiosity planes. They're kind of fun. They're neat. They're made out of aluminum. The aluminum is going to leave black marks on your, on your wood. Um, but, as you can see here, this mouth is wide open. I mean, absolutely wide open. If you could figure out how to close that mouth up, you probably could get it to smooth wood. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. We're actually going to try to sharpen this guy and get it to work. Now, one of my favorite companies, uh, guys that know me really well, they know that I like Record, I like Union, and I like Miller's Falls. Okay, so Record is basically a Bailey pattern plane um, with some various, some slight variations. You have your typical Bailey frog seats, the upper and then the lower where the feet go. It's the same as these other Stanleys that are over here, with the exception of the frog adjustment screw. is a little different. It goes into a captured slot on the Record. Here you've got a slot that's, that's captured. Another thing the records typically have is in the inside here, it'll say on, off, with an arrow showing you which way to turn it, which is nice and convenient for, for new guys on how to make the blade go in and out. So, but other than that, it's effectively, it's a Bailey pattern plane. So you're going to have that with Miller's Falls and a couple other brands as well. But I'm, I'm a big, huge fan of record. I love record planes. They're very well made. And they were the last of the, of the big companies to make really good quality planes, even late in the game late up into the 70s and 80s, well, early 80s, um, they made solid planes, beautiful planes. They work exceptionally well. If you can find yourself a record, loose hole record, the ones without the lever cap, this is important, without the lever cap with the neural nut. If you get the one with the neural nut, leave it, just leave it there. It's, it's not worth messing with. Um, if it's got a traditional lever cap on it, you're pretty much good. So that's with the records. And again, these are completely adjustable as far as the uh, frog goes, closing the mouth up. They're very adjustable, just like the Stanleys are and the Miller's Falls and whatnot. These just happen to have the, the convenience of the frog adjustment screw, which is nice. It's nice, but again, it's not required. There are some really, really good planes that are made out there, like Sargent and Union, that are top-of-the-line quality-wise, and they don't have frog adjustment screws. So the frog adjustment screw is not automatically going to tell you it's a piece of junk or, or it's a good plane. So it's the rest of the mechanics of the plane that tell you whether or not it's going to be a good plane for you to use.
So as you can see, guys, here, every time I go through and I take one of these planes and put it back together, you can tell it's really easy to make adjustments to these planes for the most part. Like it really, really, really is. So, now, moving on to a different category of frog. This is a Stanley Bedrock, number 604. You'll hear guys refer to them as 604 round sides. Um, the reason they're referred to as round sides is because they have a round-sided cheek on them. This round-sided cheek just means it's earlier. There's the flat top and the round side. I don't happen to have a flat top here, however... I will be showing you an example in a minute that's basically a copy of the, the bedrock with the flat top. So, all right, the difference of the frog, the frog seat here is, look, it's a large area, large support area inside of that frog, or in, sorry, inside of that frog seat. There's a large surface area there. The more surface area you have, if it's machine right, the more rigidity you have. So that's a good thing. Bedrock planes are really, really good planes. Probably the best that Stanley made. Uh, now, will this outperform every other plane with a Bailey-style frog and frog seat? No, it won't. It does give a little bit more rigidity. Um, you can get a finer shaving out of them, untuned for the most part, than you can out of a regular uh, Bailey. But there are exceptions to all those rules. I've gotten bed rocks that weren't anywhere near flat, where the frog didn't sit properly in the frog seat. It just was pretty much... A nightmare to get ready. And I've found Bailey, Bailey style or Bailey pattern, Stanley's, Miller's Falls, Sargent's that needed no tuning work. Absolutely none. And they worked great. So it, it just depends. Was it Friday? Was it Saturday? Did they have a liquid lunch at the factory? You know, was quality control out the lunch? Who knows? So now on the, the earlier bedrocks, you're going to find and of course, it does have a frog adjustment screw. I'll cover that real quick before I put it back. There is a frog adjustment screw. Um, you're going to find that they're a little different than a newer bedrock. By a little different, they go back together a little different. The bed typically is a little shallower. Um, the area where the frog frog screws go in is less rigid than the flat tops. They work just as good. Now, luckily, for those of you out there with tight budgets, the earlier round side bedrocks typically bring less money. You're getting the same quality plane, but it's, it's costing you less to own. So again, quick to put back together. The frog adjustment screw still moves the frog back and forth just the same as it would on a regular Bailey style plane. As you can see here, doesn't really look different from the outside. Until you look in the back. The back will tell you all about it. Now, well actually, let's cover the other, the other, the flat top style setup here. Now, so this is a Lee Nielsen. This is the one that I had tested before, hence the markings on the side of the plane. Um, it's a phenomenally made plane. It's one of my favorite planes I've had. Uh, this is based on a Stanley Bedrock flat top. Now, you have effectively the same slanted frog seat here underneath, right? This frog seat is just a little thicker. It's a little bit more rigid towards the back. This screws up a little higher. Now, the difference between the two, when you put the frog back in, you don't screw the frog down. It has a pin right here, and this pin is engaged by another pin that's come from the back that screws in. So basically, your frog sits down, and then this little area right here, where there's a little notch, goes towards the back. It's going to go towards the back where the pins come in. Now the benefit of these guys is, in fact, you can, you can really tighten the mouth up on them and still get a lot of rigidity. Which is why the Lee Nielsen's work so well. There's just a lot of rigidity. Um, this particular plane in general works phenomenally. I've actually gotten as tight as a half a thousand shaving out of this plane. 
So as far as I'm concerned, it is a super smoother. And it's comfortable, it works very well, and they're pretty. I mean, honestly, who doesn't like a pretty plane, right? These are a little trickier to get locked in. But one of the biggest benefits about a um, flat top bedrock style is you don't have to take the iron or chip breaker out to adjust the mouth opening. You loosen up those two side pins, and again, I'll cover this more in detail later. You loosen up two side pins, move the frog, and then tighten the side pins back up. That's kind of nice and convenient. It's one of the reasons why flat top bedrocks sell for so much. Now, move on to one of my one of my more favorite planes. I, I happen to I used to hate them. I was before I was smart enough to have actually tried them out. Um, Don Wilwold, time tested tools, and Casey Benton, and a couple other guys had turned me on to them a little bit to see um, the quality of them. And they're they're very well made, very very well made. Anytime you run across the Sergeant plane that's older, by all means jump on it. Now you'll find a configuration that's a little different here. Um, there is no landing down here. For the frog feet to sit on, you think, well, that's less rigid, right? It, it is on some planes. On this plane, it doesn't affect it whatsoever. It still works great. Because of the large surface area here that's actually mating to a large surface area inside of there. And I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but in use, it does make a lot of sense. So... Now this one happens to be an earlier, an earlier version because it has the different horseshoe style lateral. It makes it early, like I think it's Hype 3. Um, if Casey Benton or Don Will will decide to uh, watch this video, guys leave a comment down below. I can't remember you, if this is a Type 3. I've got uh, Don Will Will's book floating around someplace. It's usually what I use to figure out what the types of these guys are. I like sergeants, but I don't collect them. And I never have collected them, so I leave it up to the experts on those guys as to what type what is when it comes to sergeants. Unions, Miller's Falls, all about it. Sergeants, I know enough to get myself in a lot of trouble. These, by the way, you can adjust the frog forward and backwards, but it is a manual adjustment. Because there is no frog adjustment screw. Now, moving on to a little less quality. But, it's a smoother. There's no frog adjustment. Because there's effectively no frog. This is a Stanley Defiance. Uh, it's made for the homeowner market. It was an economy line plane. Um, I'm hoping when I go through and sharpen all these untuned, just clean. If you can get a thousandth out of it, I, I really highly doubt it based on the configuration. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking it might chatter quite a bit because there's virtually no support back here. There's really not a lot of support back here for that iron. And you'll see when I go to put it back together, which takes virtual seconds. Um, it's not real, not real stable. Like it's just not they make good scrub planes, though. If you find one out in the wild, don't be afraid to buy it. They make great scrub planes. It's, it's the same. It's got a lever cap. It's got an iron and chip breaker. So that part's good. It does have a depth adjuster. This one's a little bit less common uh, because it does have a depth adjuster right here that allows you to move the iron in and out. Some of these don't have depth adjusters. and They're the more common ones you find. You find one of those new, leave them for the full full line collector Stanley guys. You don't really need it that well. The next one's a little less common, but it's a big favorite amongst amongst collectors, and they actually work pretty good. They have an adjustable mouth without having an adjustable frog, which is really kind of cool. It's a cool concept. It's basically the adjuster is screwed in to the sole. It operates on a mechanism inside. It's where this little nub right here goes in and out. 
to adjust the depth of the iron. So it's, it's, it's kind of a unique deal. There is no chip breaker. Your lever caps your chip breaker. Set the guy down where you want it. And you align your, align your iron with the pendants there. And tighten your lever cap. It's pretty simple. Pretty simple deal. What makes this one unique is it's got two screws down in here in the base. So these little two little screws on either side of the back of the knob allow you to adjust the mouth opening. So if you screw it in, it pushes this plate back and closes the mouth up. So it's kind of, again, a real unique plane. It's a, a steer's patent plane. All right, so moving on to a, a, a gauge plane, right? So a, a gauge, Stanley made gauge uh, patent plane. Uh, gauge was based originally out of New Jersey, but Stanley actually bought out the patent for these and made these guys um, for the market. These are quite unique planes, and they, they actually work pretty good, um, with the exception that there is no adjustable mouth. This doesn't adjust at all. The mouth doesn't adjust at all. So it's it's very usable. You can get a pretty good shaving out of it, but it's you're not going to be able to get the finest shaving out of it because you can't really move the iron back and forth. And there are some cases where you want a smoother, you don't want the mouth all, all the way closed as well. And again, we'll go into that a little bit later on. So what you have going on here is you have a a plate here that's screwed into a to a um, extrusion in the back. It's a, basically a casting that fits inside of a mechanism that's right inside of here. And that allows the iron to move back and forth. So if you put this guy down here, it allows you to adjust the iron in and out based on the position of that pin that's there. So, and you can adjust. The cool thing about the gauge is you can adjust that wherever you want. And then this has an adjustable... Uh, lever cap slash chip breaker. The chip breaker is actually attached to the back of the lever cap on this. So since it's attached to the back of the lever cap and it's almost razor sharp down here at the end, this is actually sharp. I could cut paper with this right now. Um, you can move that up and down inside of here to get it closer to the end of the iron to break off, break your chips out. So similar to a state to stay set technology for like a um, uh, a sergeant so but as you can see the mouth opening is still relatively big there give me one second here i'll adjust it down it's not it's not terribly open so it is kind of capable but it's not terribly closed either. So you can see here, there is enough room almost for the screwdriver to go in. This will make a decent shaving, like I was saying before. Um, it may not be the finest. So the key with this one would be you would want to make it as sharp as possible. Like even more so than the other ones. You want to really, really strap it and hone it up real nice and tight. Now, most guys that are into smoothing planes can't ignore the infill. This is the British's answer, the, the uh, British market answer to a super smoother, basically. And they all are like that. Now, this one is a later model. It's got a Norris, Norris patent adjuster. And what it is is you're turning this in and, out, in and out to make the iron go in and out, but you're using the same lever like this to tip the iron. So, but the Norris planes are particularly heavy. Um, this one is all oh, it's newer it's well later on because it has a lot more cast a lot more cast material here it's still nice and heavy which is good all this is wood and they're really pretty honestly there is no adjustment to the frog because the frog is integral to the body um, other infills it's all going to be wood back here and the wood acts almost as a dampener so if there's any slight chatter or any slight uh, harmonics the wood will absorb that harmonics, which is part of the reason why infills are such good planes. I mean, you can really get almost see-through shavings. Actually, you can get see-through shavings on the right infill. They're just particularly well 
particularly good users, really, honestly. So on this one, the iron is, that's the other thing. You do have your lateral there, but you got to get it seated right. The iron is just making outside contact. And the mouth is kind of open. It's a later version of the Norris, but it still would be a good plane. And there's nice thick tapered irons in these typically. So again, zero chatter. It's just nicer to find them when the, when the mouth's a little less open. Now, I'm going to cover something real quick. I'll take this guy apart in front of you. Uh, these planes work really well. Um, they're made by Stanley. They have the Union style, the Union style ladder on them. The wheel down here is down low. So this was this was Stanley made. It was made for a hardware store, right? Uh, Montgomery Wards, Wards Master. These Wards Masters are really good planes. And I'm gonna take this one apart real quick. If you remember back at the the Stanley, the World War II version Stanley there without the frog adjuster. You're going to start seeing a lot of things that are starting to look familiar, right? Including the wood, the knob, the everything, right? Now, mind you, these are unclean, untouched, unmessed with, which is why we're using them to kind of do the study we're doing to see how well they do as far as uh, making a shaving goes. This one's just real dirty. Anyways, you have the same points contact. One, two, three, four. It's a Bailey plane. It's a Stanley Bailey number four. And they typically go a little less money than a regular Stanley. Save your money. Get the same plane. That's pretty much how that goes. It's got the same adjuster on the back here that the other one does. The difference is this one's brass. This one is actually brass back here instead of being aluminum like it is on the Stanley. So... These are excellent planes. They work really well, and the proof will be in the pudding when I make the shavings with them, right? So this frog is also adjustable forwards and backwards. Um, these subplanes, what I like to call subs, uh, the ones that were made for hardware stores and for mass retailers, um, a lot of guys, they look at them. They look at them on eBay, and, oh, that's only worth 20 bucks because it's a junk plane, right? I've proved, proven time and time again you can buy a Miller's Falls made Craftsman, or Miller's Falls made Dunlop, or a Munkham Rewards made by Stanley, or, uh, you know, Dunlop made by um, Sargent, or most of them work just as good as the parent maker. The difference is, since people don't seem to appreciate them, they cost less. So who wins? You. If you're a user, you're tight on a budget, buy a Montgomery Rewards. Way cheaper than buying the same thing in Stanley. If the name doesn't matter, you just want the sucker to work, there you go. You can't beat it with a stick. It's a great plane. All right. So in conclusion, we covered a few things as far as what makes us smoother. We covered the different types of frogs, different types of smoothing planes, um, which, by the way, that list is not all-inclusive. There are a lot more out there. It would take me two or three hours to go through every single frog configuration that was ever made. But you have got a basic glimpse into what you're going to find, for the most part, out in the marketplace. So the next thing we're going to do when we come back in the next part of the series is these are going to get a bath off-camera. They're going to get sharpened as sharp as I can get them, and they're going to get adjusted. Now, I'll go through the adjustment processes. I'll take one out and show you where how to adjust it to get a better shaving, that kind of thing. But we're going to adjust them as tight as we can and basically make them as good as we can without tuning them. And we're going to see, out of the row of planes in front of me here and the ones on the side, which ones give us the best shaving. Now, I won't include the Lee Nielsen the Wood River or the Clifton in that in the next the next part of the video. I'm gonna go through just the vintage planes. Because the Lee Nielsen, the Wood River, and the Clifton have something against above and beyond against the the older stuff here. The older stuff 
was made with manual milling machines. It was made by machinists. It was made by basically talented craftsmen. The Cliftons, the Lee Nielsens, and the Wood Rivers were made, they were made by some manual, manual work, and they were made by craftsmen, but they were heavily dependent upon CNC technology. And I encourage you to look around YouTube. There's a couple of videos out there on how they make the Lee Nielsen number four, number six, number eight, number ten, or not number ten, but number um, um, seven and a half. All these planes that they make, you'll see the process. They grind, they CNC uh, some stuff. So it's kind of unfair advantage on the older stuff. Um, so we're going to focus mostly on the vintage and antique planes and what they're capable of, right? And then once we do that, I'll go through and tune one smoother. And to answer the question from one of the previous videos, they wanted to know, would I tune one that had been dipped in vinegar? Would I clean it up and straighten it out and make it right and tune it to, to be a good user? And I will do that with the record state set number four. You've seen this thing in a bunch of videos. Um, this will be the plane that I'll clean up. It's the one that was bathed in vinegar and needs rescued, basically. Um, since it's going to be a user, it'll probably go in my shop as a user. Um, but it'll get tuned up, fully tuned up, and fully ready to rock and roll. The goal is to try to get a thousandth thickness or less shaving. That's the goal on all these. And we'll see how close we can get. So until then, I'll uh, get to cleaning these things up, get them sharp. I'll be back soon. Watch for the wait for the next video to come out in this series. So enjoy.